Hi guys and welcome to the Craft Beer Channel. Today I'm down at Burning Sky, one of my favourite cast producers and also one of the very few breweries in the UK to have their own cool ship. So these guys are making spontaneous Lambic inspired beers and it's very, very humbling to be here. But today we're not making spontaneous beer, we're making the house beer for the Beer Merchants Tap which opens in mid-Feb. Uh, and this house beer, of course, had to be Belgian inspired because we're down here at Burning Sky and we're brewing it with the two other guys that are going to be involved in the Good Company Blendery that we're founding at the tap, and that's Duration and Wild Beer Co. So we're making a Belgian pale ale with some very special twists, which you are about to learn about. <laughs> or representatives of three of the most foremost uh, Belgian mixed firm breweries in the UK. Uh, Stuart from Wild, uh, Mark from Burning Sky and Bates from what will soon be Duration uh, Brewing Company. And today, as I said in the intro, we're brewing a collaboration beer which will become the house beer uh, for the Beer Merchants Tap in Hackney Wick, which opens in mid-Feb. Um, so when we came up with the idea of doing a house beer, we wanted to do something that was going to be drinkable, um, but also kind of represented what all of you guys do in your brewery and what we want the tap to tap to be and indeed the blendery to be so we came up with the idea of a, a belgian pale um, and then i very much left it up to you guys so can you talk me through what what kind of beer we ended up with we just wanted like something that represented the ethos of all of us together and something that's drinkable not a chore so we wanted a sessionable belgium style pale ale so what we've done with the mold bill is we've kept it fairly clean there's a little bit of carrot but otherwise it's it's wheat for some body and an extra pale malt for, to let everything else shine. Yeah, it's all Pilsner, wheat, small amount of Cara, Pilsner. Yeah. I mean, Belgium's <coughs> obviously very famous for its stronger beers and people sort of associate Belgian beer with that, but there are session beers from Belgium that are incredibly flavour forward, which I guess is to do with the yeast and the flavours they can get out of the yeast without using huge amounts of hops, which can add bitterness or all that kind of thing. So we're taking inspiration from that, yep. Yeah, we are, and also to like showcase what European and classic and noble hops can do mm -hmm. with, you know, they, they aren't just there for lagers and stuff like that. You yeah. know, there's a lot of great flavors there and people are so used to new world hops and all the really citrusy and piney and fruity flavors you get. There's actually, there's a lot of depth in the noble hop varieties. And so what hops are we, what hops are we using? Streetle Spelt and Styrian Goldings, yeah. uh, three, late charges so uh, with going up in size and then at the end of the boil off we've got like a steep hop which is the biggest aroma charge and then it'll be a, another so what did you get from those hops that you think will help to me i just get a big floral grassy even a little bit of hay sort of vibe to them which complements the yeast quite well uh, this style of beer is to me all about the balance nothing shines through heavier than the other thing there's yeast there's the hops there's the malt it's the type of beer that you can have three or four of before you realize that you've had three or four of just because it's so well made, so well balanced that you just look down like, oh, I'll have another one of those. Yeah. Which to me is a table, as a house beer. That's what you want. Yeah. And so we've also added, uh, before we get onto these, we've added grains of paradise. So they're like really kind of fruity peppercorns. Actually a really old type of pepper that was used when, they were used in the UK a lot when black pepper was an expensive spice. But now the, the tables have turned and the grains of paradise have become expensive. But they're just like, they've got like a sort of minty pepperiness to them. So I mean, we're only using like a tiny amount, more to complement, you know, the, the bittering from the hops and the accentuate the flavor of the yeast as yeah. well. So it's not a flavor you'll necessarily pick out. It's just, but it, without it being there, the, it, the beer would lose something. Yeah. I mean, you, uh, why would you use it in uh, schnoodle bit? Or is that pink pepper? Pink pepper is that a different thing? Pit. We have used grains of paradise before, yeah. um, and for similar reasons, just a layer of not necessarily noticeable complexity to a beer. Yeah. Adding spices to any beer really should, well, certainly Belgium style beer, shouldn't be that it's like, wow, that's really peppery. 
they put lots of pepper in that so you should <laughs> you know you shouldn't be able, it's not there for that it's there for a subtle subtleness yeah. if you can pick the spices out you've done it wrong yeah, yeah. so that floralness that's coming from a the noble hops and b the peppers uh, the peppercorns that's to complement the arden yeast yeah what what varieties are then who uses it and what kind of flavors are we going to get so it's quite it's quite a fruity um Belgian strain isn't it it's um less of less of the spice more of the fruit some kind of vegetables yeah um where did it originate from uh okay. oh right okay chief i think it is or either it's french yeah i mean that's origin. kind of where most of the yeast banks have isolated it from is I mean, there's not many other breweries in the Arden nope. of any size, and Rochefort, uh, I think that's about it. yeah, <laughs> uh, and Schuf also produce a lot of, the, albeit quite strong, clean, hop forward, yeah. pale ale, Belgian pale ales. Yeah, so it works perfectly. And we're going to end up with quite a dry, maybe a little bit hazy, but fairly, fairly clear beer as well, a bit like the Schuf beers that are they're fairly crisp, aren't they? Yeah, exactly, and we're not going to. There's going to be no any filtration or centrifuge yeah. in here. Um, so what's in the beer is going to stay in the beer. In the beer. Yeah. 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 Well, um, the the plan with this beer is that uh, yeah. once we've drunk our way through the the Burning Sky batch, that will have become to duration <coughs> into wild and brew a, a similar beer, perhaps the same regime, same yeast, and see what else we can can do with the beer. So this won't be the last collaboration that we do together, and certainly once we get the uh, the spontaneous stuff going. Uh, we just start with something very fruitful. So, oh, so like you could brew the same beer at three different venues and the beer would be different. So yeah. that's interesting, you know, whether it stays the recipe stays the same or mutates, the beer is always going to be slightly different. Yeah. Which Even is from the water, anything yeah. like that can be a completely yeah. different yeah. sort of vibe. So it's, it's an interesting experiment to do. Um, guys, thanks so much for having us uh, and for letting us try uh, things like your cuvee, which was delicious. Uh, you'll be able to drink the beer, which is called Hoos. Uh, which is the Flemish for House uh, at the Beer Motions Tap when it opens. We'll give you all the details of that and obviously a taster at the tap once we're drinking it. Uh, cheers, guys. Cheers. cheers. cheers.